Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Welcome to 2022. A happy New Year, I should say. Uh, I'm going to be in 2 Kings chapter 13. 2 Kings chapter 13. If you have a old Schofield Bible, uh, that'll be page 438. 438. <clears throat> and welcome to you here in person and those that are tuning in by front row. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We've got people watching. Thank you for that. I sure do uh, appreciate it. Amen. And uh, remember the folks on the prayer list, pray that uh, God would touch them. Uh, uh, Benny's mom, uh, Dorsey Ann, remember her. Uh, uh, Sister Margaret needs your prayers. Sister Polly, Sister Lottie, Brother Raymond needs your prayers. Uh, and uh, just so many. Uh, our nation, pray that God would have his way uh, in our nation. Amen. And uh, so, Second Kings chapter number 13. Uh, and page 438 in the old Schofield Bible. While you're finding your place, anybody need a cat? I got a, a new visitor showed up at my house. Never seen him before, don't know where he came from. He's obviously been somebody's cat because he keeps trying to get in my house, but he's uh, he's pretty cat, but but I got a cat. And he's uh, looks like he maybe he's been outside a while. He's, he needs to be fattened up a little bit. I'm trying to find out who uh, who owns him and see if I can get him back to his owner. But uh, uh, if if you're in need of a cat, I got a good one for you. He's he's nice. He don't bite. And he's friendly and and uh, he just needs to be loved and fed and watered. And that's that's about it. <laughs> All right. Second Kings chapter number thirteen. Let's look at verse number twenty. Uh, and Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass as they were burying a man that, behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. But Hazel, the king of Syria, oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoahaz, and the Lord was gracious unto them and had compassion on them and had respect unto him because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and would not destroy them, neither cast he them from his presence as yet. So Hazel, king of Syria, died and Ben-Hadad, his son, reigned in his stead. And Jehoahaz, the son of uh, Jehoahaz, took out again the hand of uh, uh, Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazel, uh, the cities which he had taken out of the hand of Jehoahaz, his father by war. Three times did Joash beat him and recover the cities of Israel. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for your blessings that uh, you have uh, given us. Thank you for uh, those things, uh, Lord, that you've done for us in the past uh, year, uh, a great year. Uh, thank you for it. And Lord, uh, even though we had uh, uh, difficulties uh, in the year, uh, Lord, you saw us through all those things. And I, I pray, God, that you might uh, be with us now. Help us, Lord, to uh, uh, keep our trust uh, in you. I pray, Father, that you'd save those that are lost to speak to their heart. Uh, help those that are sick. Touch them today. Uh, put your hand upon them. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray amen amen uh, well uh, if you read uh, more of this story uh, you see here the death of uh, uh, Elisha uh, and uh, you, you will see uh, back uh, I didn't read it but if you go back into uh, chapter 13 in the earlier verses uh, you'll find uh, uh, that Joash or uh, Jehoash, uh, as he's called, uh, came to visit uh, Elisha at the passing of the year and the dawning of a new year. Uh, and, uh, you know, it had been 60 years since the call of 
Elisha. Remember when God called him, he said, uh, if uh, uh, you see Elijah go up, uh, 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 then uh, uh, you know I'll give you an answer to your prayer, which is basically a double portion. Uh, and he saw uh, that uh, uh, event, and, and he cried out, uh, you know, oh uh, Lord, uh, uh, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen uh, thereof. Uh, well, this scene is 45 years after God told uh, Elisha uh, to go anoint Jehu to be king. And he said, I want you to go anoint him. Uh, and this was the first task God gave him, go anoint him. Uh, and then uh, you go and, and run, amen, and run out the door and flee. Uh, and so we hadn't heard from Elisha in 45 years, but he's, uh, he's fulfilled uh, his calling, amen. Uh, and, and much like John the Baptist, uh, Elisha, uh, had been a burning and shining light, amen, in, in the time that he lived in. And, and he was still a light uh, for, uh, you know, we find uh, Joash now, this uh, new king. Uh, he's coming to Elisha, the man of God, uh, visiting the old prophet, uh, and he's seeking his advice, uh, and he's weeping over his impending death uh, because uh, Elisha is old, uh, uh, and he's not physically able to carry out the things that he once did. Uh, and some of the things that he did, but he can still be a blessing. Amen. Uh, some people, uh, you know, when uh, folks grow older, uh, they think, well, they've served their purpose and they're no good for anything anymore. But, but God said that we are to respect our elders. Amen. We are to take care of them. Amen. And, and uh, they can give us wise uh, counsel. Uh, they have seen uh, the things uh, uh, which we have not seen uh, and the things that we encounter, uh, amen. We've we got two great resources, one uh, or three. Uh, uh, one is the Word of God. Uh, uh, the other is uh, God uh, himself through prayer. Uh, and then uh, uh, the third would be to seek advice uh, uh, from the older folks, amen, who've seen that, uh, who have been there, who have done that, amen. Uh, and, uh, and not only that, but... but but listen, uh, you know, that's one of the problems I find today is finding uh, young folks who are willing to listen to uh, advice. You know, in, in, uh, you're not trying to tell them necessarily what to do, but, uh, but you're saying, you know, I have uh, done that kind of thing. I've seen that kind of thing. And, and uh, you know, here's what uh, I, I, would, uh, I would recommend. Uh, and, but a lot of times, you know, youth has its own set of problems. And, and sometimes youth uh, is hard to listen. Amen. Uh, but here, Joash says, Elisha, I need your help. Now, his father, uh, we know, is Ahaziah, or you've also found his name as Jehoahaz, uh, 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 was the son of Ahab and Jezebel. Uh, and so that would have made Joash uh, the grandson. Amen. Uh, his father had died and left Israel uh, uh, in, uh, in a bad spot, physically and spiritually. One writer described it like this. He said, it was the glory of Israel raked up in ashes, buried and lost, and turned into shame. Amen. Uh, uh, they had followed the sins of Jeroboam by worshiping uh, two golden calves and establishing groves uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and defiling God's name uh, and reducing his holiness uh, to the likeness of an ox. Amen. Uh, and, and for these things, uh, God uh, allowed them to be trodden uh, underfoot and controlled uh, by the Syrians. And thus we see uh, Hazel uh, uh, coming into play. Uh, but then this hour of darkness. Amen. And we're in an hour of darkness too, amen. But listen, thank God I still see the light, amen. I still see the light. Why? Because I'm on the, the Lord's side, amen. And he is where the light is. Yes, we are in a dark age. Yes, the world is raging. Yes, uh, uh, there's much uncertainty in the world. Uh, uh, yes, there are things happening in this world uh, that we don't know what's going on. We get it, uh, one advice one day and another set of advice the next day. Uh, and we don't know, you know, what to do or what not to do. Uh, uh, and listen, you say, preacher, what's your advice? My advice uh, is to keep on serving God uh, and pray about it and do what God tells you to do. Uh, and, uh, and don't worry too much about some of these uh, people uh, that are offering you advice uh, from other places, uh, uh, the government and all that, uh, because it changes uh, every day or two. Amen. 
I, I mean, you don't have to uh, uh, be a rocket scientist uh, uh, to understand that. You know, uh, we uh, we were told uh, at one time, you know, uh, when the uh, the pandemic uh, came, uh, it said uh, they were saying uh, uh, there's no need to wear a mask. Uh, you know, and then they said, oh, yes, we need to wear a mask. And then they said, well, it might be good if you wear two masks. Uh, uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, maybe more than that. And, and then, uh, uh, you know, it was uh, a certain kind of mask. And then no mask again. And then uh, it was vaccines. And, and uh, uh, they told us, you know, the, the vaccines uh, will uh, will stop uh, this uh, uh, this virus. You know, they said they'll stop it then it's track. Everybody get vaccinated. And then they came out and said, no. Uh, it won't stop it. You still catch it. Uh, you can still spread it, but get the vaccine anyway. Uh, and then it was like, well, now you need a booster, uh, and now you need another booster. And, and now I'm reading. It looks like we're going to need uh, uh, boosters, uh, you know, ad nauseum uh, uh, forever. It seems. You know, uh, what do we believe? Well, I believe what God said. Amen. Amen. Believe what God said. Uh, listen. So it's an hour of darkness. Joash comes to Elisha, he said, I need your help. And he quotes, uh, he said, oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, the horsemen thereof. This quote is found one other place in the Bible. In Kings chapter 9, 1 Kings, or 2 Kings, excuse me, chapter 9, when Elisha cried out uh, with the same words on the day Elisha was taken up into heaven. Amen. Now Joash seeks counsel from the man of God. And he, it's, uh, he said, uh, no wonder uh, God had said in Proverbs 22 uh, in verse 8, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. You know, uh, uh, the reason for our problems in America today is we have removed the ancient landmark, amen. We've, uh, you know, you say, what landmark? Well, uh, think about uh, uh, where the surveyors come on your property uh, and you ask them to survey and, and you pay them a lot of money to survey uh, and they put a rod in the ground. That's a landmark. I used to go out in the woods and uh, I used to see uh, some uh, concrete uh, things that almost look kind of like an obelisk, uh, about that tall if you stood it up, uh, uh, and it had uh, numbers on it, uh, uh, and uh, a lot of times it had fallen over, somebody pushed it over, whatever, it was laying over, uh, and it was way out in the woods, and I used to wonder what are those things. Uh, well, there were surveyors markers that they had put out. You know, somebody owned uh, this land, uh, and those were the survey markers. Uh, uh, God said, don't remove the ancient landmark. And the problem with uh, America uh, uh, and the world, too, uh, is that we have forgotten about God. Amen. We are looking for the Lord to come. Yes, I believe God is coming. Yes, uh, I know he's coming. And yes, I want him to come. Uh, but uh, I don't want him to come. Uh, uh, and he's not going to do this. I don't want him to come before the time. Uh, amen. Uh, I want him to come when it's time for him to come. Amen. So what are you saying? Well, uh, uh, you know, some people uh, look at that as just a way to get out of the current problems. And, and that would be great. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and I'm all for the Lord coming. Uh, amen. Uh, but God has a time clock and God has a, uh, uh, a will that must be done. Uh, and so we want that to be done. Uh, you know, God knows when the last person who is going to be saved in this age of grace is going to be saved. And then uh, I believe he'll sound the trumpet. But in the meantime, we have to live. You know, somebody said we sing about the sweet by and by, but we have to live in the nasty now and now. You know, and that's true. Amen. And so, uh, I, you know, I, what I'm saying is I, I believe that if we turn our face toward God as a nation, uh, God would make us uh, great again. We were great one time. Amen. The, the world looked to the United States. We were the greatest superpower in the world. And we did a lot of good. We helped a lot of people. Uh, we had a lot of influence. Uh, uh, and what happened now? Uh, well, we forgot about God. We throw morals and ethics and all that out the window. Well, let me get on with uh, uh, what I want to talk about. Uh, Joash was facing, uh, at this time, the Bible said the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. Amen. 
uh, and they threw uh, Elisha in his uh, in his sepulcher. Uh, they put Elisha in the sepulcher, and, and this man that died, uh, uh, they threw him in there. He touched the bones of Elisha, and the Bible said he revived and stood upon his feet. Amen. There was enough power in the bones of Elisha to raise a man from the dead. Amen. Would to God that we were in that same uh, uh, place, that we had enough power with God. Amen. That we could do these things. You say, well, we'll never have that. Uh, or we can't have that. Well, we could. Jesus said if you had the faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, be removed into the sea, and it would be done. Amen. The reason we don't have power is because we don't seek God. And I'm not shooting at you. I'm talking about me too. Amen. Uh, listen, uh, and so new things brought by the coming year. What are they? Well, new problems for one thing. Joash was weeping. He was weeping. He didn't know what to do. What he needed to do was to grow up. Amen. Uh, 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 and, and put his big boy clothes on and, and get on with it. Uh, you know, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 said, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, uh, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes uh, in Christ. In other words, uh, there are some folks who are Christians, they are saved, they know God, uh, but they are still babies in the Lord, uh, and they refuse to grow up. Amen. Now, you and I, how long do we have to, or how long do we want to, hear baby talk? You know, I, I've been one, I, I've never really leaned toward that kind of thing, or really liked that kind of thing. Uh, and uh, to our girls, uh, we never talk baby talk to them, you know. Uh, and we talk to them just like I would talk to my wife or just like she would talk to me. Uh, and, uh, you know, when the, uh, the great-grandchild comes, uh, uh, we don't talk baby talk to him. We talk to him uh, uh, just like we talk to anybody else. Uh, and, uh, you know, so folks uh, uh, do the things that they want to do, and, and I'm not going to knock them. Uh, uh, but I think they do better, uh, and they communicate better, and they understand better uh, if you talk to them like a person and not talk to them in some diminutive little cutesy uh, voice, you know. I know we're trying to be good and, and, and all of that, but really, uh, what does that do? Uh, anyway, let me move on before I get in trouble. <laughs> Amen. Joash needed to grow up. You know, you, uh, you know, it's kind of like the, the vision of going to a family reunion, a gathering, a wedding, or something like that. And there you see uh, uh, the dreaded aunt uh, uh, who loves you, and she always wants to do one thing. Come here, honey, and she wants to pinch your cheek, you know. And you're watching for her because you want to avoid her at all costs because you just hate having your... Uh, your cheek pinched, you know. Uh, and, oh, you're so sweet, you're so cute. Uh, you look like your mama, you look like your daddy, or whatever, you know, and all that stuff. And, and you're like, leave me alone, go away. Uh, I could have lived uh, without hearing any of that, you know. Uh, listen, grow up. Uh, uh, Paul was saying to those uh, Christians at Corinth, grow up and quit being spiritual babies. Uh, amen. Uh, quit feeding on the milk uh, uh, and, uh, and give away the bottle, uh, uh, you know, uh, and start drinking from a cup. Up and, and get rid of the bottle, amen. Uh, and then he needed to make a stand. Uh, Ephesians 6 13 said, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand. Amen. In other words, do your preparations to stand, and then once you've done your preparations, just stand. Amen. Just stand. Why? Because God will be on your side. Make a stand. Uh, you know, the old saying uh, is, uh, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You know. Uh, and we got lots of folks uh, in uh, America like that. We got lots of folks in churches like that. And they just go the way of the wind. You know, whichever way it comes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know. I, I heard somebody the other day talking about someone uh, who had been in a church. Uh, their family had been uh, going to that church for for many years, stretching back. Uh, you know, through uh, mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and great grandma and grandpa. I mean, their family had been there a long time. Uh, had been a great church, and, and over the years it had changed. And now this person's on up in years. 
uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the leadership of the church changed, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, they decided that they didn't need a, uh, a man as pastor anymore, uh, even though the Bible said, uh, you know, let the bishop be the husband of one wife, uh, they decided to get a woman as uh, their preacher, uh, and this person said, well, I don't like it. I don't believe in it. I don't think it's biblical, uh, but I'm not going to leave the church because mama went here and daddy went here and grandma and grandpa went here and great grandma and grandpa went here and they're all buried out there uh, in, the, in the cemetery. And Well, listen, guess what? Uh, they're dead and they don't care. And if it means that much to you, dig them up and move them somewhere else. Amen. The, the Bible said that we are uh, to serve God. Uh, and brother, if you can't straighten it out, uh, then go somewhere else and find a church uh, uh, that is uh, preaching and teaching the Word of God. Amen. Amen. New problems for the coming year. Amen. Uh, and, and then what else could he do? Well, he could make a surprise attack. You know, he's facing Hazael, uh, and Hazael wants to control this thing. Uh, uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it's always good sometimes, or sometimes good to go on the offense. Amen. Good offense, the best defense, somebody said. Uh, listen, let me give you this example. In the 1967 Six-Day War, Egypt and Israel, you know, went to war. Uh, and uh, uh, Egypt, Syria, and Jordan threatened to crush Israel. And by the way, they, they still want to do that. Uh, and, uh, and they will come again. They will rise again. Well, Egypt, Syria, and Israel had the most advanced uh, and well-equipped fighter planes in the Middle East. So what did Israel do? Well, they launched the first strike, an airstrike. With just under uh, uh, 200 planes, Israel went uh, to uh, Egypt and attacked their air bases and bombed their runways uh, and destroyed the runways so they couldn't take off and destroyed what planes that they could. Those that managed to get airborne were quickly shot down uh, and the rest uh, were blasted on the ground. But they didn't just stop there. They launched a second attack on the Jordanian forces, and they were crippled. They crippled their air forces. And then, uh, guess what happened? There's a, a ground war kicked off. And the ground war kicked off, but it fell quickly uh, because they had no air support. And so Israel basically uh, 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 ate their lunch for them. Amen. Amen. They attacked first. They had some intelligence that they were going to be attacked. They had people on the ground. They were doing reconnaissance work. Uh, and brother, uh, they went and did the job. Amen. And uh, uh, that's what we need to do. Amen. We, we don't always need to be on the uh, uh, you know, wait list for the devil to come and attack us. Uh, we need to be uh, uh, you know, charging the gates of hell, as, uh, as one put it. Amen. Uh, listen, uh, going against him, uh, finding uh, folks who are uh, lost uh, and seeking them out and uh, going out in the highways and hedges and compelling them to come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, that's being uh, offensive uh, uh, to the devil. Amen. Just don't get in a corner somewhere and wait on the devil to attack us all the time. Uh, and, and But while we're doing that, watch for the snares of the devil. Amen. Uh, uh, be a stepping stone and not a stumbling block. Amen. You know, uh, and then we need to honor those that have fought a good fight in, in ahead of us. Uh, Psalm 126 said, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. In other words, God said, if you work, I'll give you rewards. Amen. How many sheaves have we gathered over the years? How many folks, uh, when we get to heaven, how many folks will come to us and say, you know, I'm here because of what you did. I'm here because you witnessed to me, or I'm here because you gave me a book, or you gave me a gospel tract, or, or, or you gave me words of encouragement, encouraged me to read the Bible, or encouraged me to go to church, or whatever uh, it was to encourage somebody. Uh, listen, uh, how many folks will we have on our list, Brother Andrew, when you get to heaven that will say, uh, you know, the Lord saved me, and I thank him for that, I owe him all for that, uh, but you were instrumental in me getting here to heaven. You know, 
I have some, but I'm, I, I, the list is short, shorter than I'd like it to be, shorter than it ought to be. Amen. We ought to have lots of people on our list. Honor those who have fought the good fight, those who have gone ahead of us. You know, years ago, uh, I used to see uh, in the house, uh, my dad had a picture of a ship. And I asked my dad, I said, well, what's the picture of that ship, a naval ship? And uh, he said, that was a ship I served on. And uh, I said, okay. And, and over the years, I came to, uh, uh, you know, see that ship, uh, uh, you know, and do some research on it and whatnot. Uh, he was, uh, you know, dispatched, uh, uh, you know, uh, they went through the, the Panama Canal and, and around, and then they ended up in San Francisco, and they went through the San Francisco. And he told me before I ever went there, he said, you know, they sailed underneath uh, the Golden Gate Bridge, uh, and they were headed toward the South Pacific, and and he saw all of that, uh, you know, all that stuff in the uh, the Solomon Islands and uh, New Guinea and Australia and and all of that uh, stuff there, and, and you know uh, things that you know I couldn't imagine, uh, uh, you know, uh, talking about the kamikazes one time, and he said, you know, I saw a, a kamikaze uh, a Japanese pilot go down the smokestack of another uh, ship that was in our uh, in our group. You know, I, I mean, uh, uh, all these things. But but uh, anyway, I, I, when my dad, uh, uh, before he passed, you know, I was looking at his records and, and uh, looking at the stuff, and, and I thought, you know, where are the uh, uh, the accommodations and stuff that he earned uh, while he was there? Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, he didn't have any. I guess they never sent them to him or whatever. And I thought, well, you know, my mind was... I would like to get those and give them to him because, uh, you know, I knew he was old. He wasn't going to last that much longer. He had never had them. I can't believe I'd ever thought of that before. So I set out on a mission, uh, and, uh, you know, I uh, I started writing the Navy. Uh, uh, back then they called the War Department. Uh, I wrote a letter to them, uh, and uh, then I, uh, I, uh, I got kind of stonewalled, and uh, and then uh, I said, well, I'll get some congressional help, and I wrote a letter to Howard Coble, uh, and, and uh, you know, try to get some help there, and just you know, one thing and another, and it was all came back to, uh, you know, uh, uh, the records uh, were burned up in a fire. And they were stored in St. Louis, Missouri, and they were burned up in a fire uh, back in the 70s. Uh, and we can't find your dad's uh, records to know what accommodations to award him unless you've got something. And I was like, well. I got his DD-214, I know when he was discharged and all that, that's all I had. Uh, and when, when Dad, uh, so I uh, had to, uh, you know, wait, and, and I couldn't give those to him before he passed, and then uh, he passed. And when he passed, we were going through the stuff, and I went through his personal belongings, and I found a little box, and in that box I found uh, a record of his discharge uh, uh, that showed uh, the information that I needed, Brother Andrew, and he had had it there all the time. And maybe he'd forgotten about it. I don't know. I could have probably asked him. He might have thought about it. I don't know. But anyway, I, I, I found that and uh, uh, and uh, made a copy of it, and I sent it off to the Navy, and I said, here it is. And within, uh, you know, a couple of weeks, here come these boxes with these medals, you know, in there. And so I, uh, I wasn't able to give it to him, but I was able to make a thing that I have at the house, a picture of my dad and all the commendations that he earned and all of that, and I have it hanging on my wall. Amen. Why? Because, you know, I believe, uh, you know, uh, we ought to honor those uh, who served. Amen. Uh, we ought to honor those who served. And so it ought to be with Christians. We ought to honor those who have done things for the Lord. I'm not talking about uh, just the uh, uh, the people like Billy Graham and all of those who have, uh, you know, uh, w uh, worked and won millions and all that, but I'm talking about, uh, you know, the folks who have lived their quiet life and they have just uh, worked in the church and done, uh, maybe they just carried the offering plate uh, and they just did the work for the Lord. Maybe they just came and occupied a seat and once in a while you would hear them say amen or, or maybe uh, they supported the church with their offerings uh, and did things that way. Or maybe the, uh, they uh, uh, helped uh, with the fellowship uh, and, and all of that kind of stuff, but they were doing the work of the Lord. We ought to honor those folk. Amen. Amen. So, and then, I'm trying to hurry. New hope for a coming year. 
New hope for what? Uh, new hope for his power. Amen. You know, our problem is lack of power sometimes. Amen. Lack of power. I pray a lot and pray and ask the Lord to, you know, give us that Holy Spirit, that moving of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about wildfire here, but I'm talking about the moving of the Holy Spirit in our hearts that we had once uh, uh, before. Amen. When p folks would weep and folks would lift their hand and, and praise the Lord and uh, and we'd see folks on the altar. Uh, uh, that was all uh, uh, because of the moving of the Holy Spirit. Uh, amen. I long to see that uh, again. Amen. I'm reminded of... Uh, a missionary, Dr. Herbert Jackson, who uh, who was uh, uh, doing a missionary work, and he was assigned a car uh, for his missionary work to go about and do his work and visit people and all that. Uh, but the car had a problem. It wouldn't start unless somebody gave it a push. Push it off, you know. I don't think you can do that to cars this day and time. But I've done it before, you know, and you probably have too. But his car wouldn't start unless you pushed it off. So he always had children to go along with him on his journey so he could use them to push the car off. If he couldn't get children, he'd be sure to park on the hill so he could coast, you know, and uh, you know how you do it, uh, and, uh, and put the clutch in and let it coast, and then you pop that clutch and, and get that thing going, and you can get her crank, get her going. You know, my grandpa used to do that, uh, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, he used to uh, get on the hill and uh, turn the engine off and put it in neutral and coast all the way down the hill to, to church, you know, because saving gas. Uh, that was my grandpa. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, he was a good one, though. He was. Uh, but anyway, Dr. Jackson uh, was uh, uh, going to entertain a new missionary who was coming to take his place. And this missionary was coming along. He was showing him the ropes. And he, uh, he got to the car, and he told him, he said, oh, by the way, this car, it's a good car. It'll get you where you're going, point A to point B. It's been faithful, but there's one problem with it. And he said, and the new missionary said, what's that? He said, the problem is it won't start uh, unless you push it off. And, uh, and so you have to deal with that. Get you some kids or park on a hill like I've done for the past two years. And as he was talking, this new missionary popped the hood and looked and was looking around under the hood. And he said, oh, Dr. Jackson, I see the problem. He said, the problem is this cable right here is not hooked up. And he attached the cable, jumped in the car, turned the key, and run, it roared to life. <laughs> Two years had been wasted pushing the car with children and parking on the hill. He had two years. Why? Because he had no power. He hadn't investigated the source of the problem was he had no power because the cable wasn't hooked up. Listen, that's like us a lot of times. We have no power because the cables come loose. We got something in our life. And I'll, let me quit with this. New hope for the coming year. I read a story by uh, 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 Booker T. Washington who described meeting an ex-slave from Virginia uh, in, in his book, uh, Booker T. Washington's book, Up From Slavery, uh, he, he said this. He said, uh, I found this man had made a contract with his master two or three years previous to the Emancipation Proclamation to the effect that the slave was to be permitted to buy uh, himself by paying so much per year for his body. And while he was paying for himself, he was to be permitted to labor where and for whom he pleased. Uh, and then he continues, finding that he could secure better wages in Ohio, he went there. When freedom came, he was still in debt to his master some $300, notwithstanding that the Emancipation Proclamation freed him from any obligation to his master. The man walked the greater uh, portion of the distance back to where his old master lived in Virginia and placed the last dollar with interest in his hands. Amen. And talking to me about this, this is Booker T. Washington said, and talking to me about this, the man told me that he knew that he did not have to pay his debt, but that he had given his word to his master and his word was not to be broken. So he felt he could not enjoy his freedom until he had fulfilled his promise. And when I read that, I thought, you know, God always keeps his promise. Now, that's the kind of man that you want to know. He gave his word, 
and he didn't owe anything. I mean, uh, the government said, never mind, forget that. You don't owe it anymore. You've been set free. But he said, I gave my word. Well, I tell you what, that is integrity. Amen. Uh, and uh, uh, listen, God, uh, the Bible said, is not a man that he can lie. It is impossible for God to lie. So we have new hope in this coming year that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Amen. And so with that, we'll say thank you for coming. God bless you. And we hope that uh, the rest of your day is a good day. Let's stand our feet and uh, hope that God will bless you uh, this afternoon. Go forth and, you know, get something to eat and have a good, uh, a good day in the Lord. Amen. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. And as we uh, pray this morning, pray. Don't forget the sick. Uh, don't forget uh, uh, Brother Curtis's uh, uh, family. Uh, Sue passed away. So pray for them that, uh, that uh, uh, God would help them in this time of need. Uh, don't forget Darlene. She needs your prayers too. Uh, Brother Andrew, would you uh, dismiss us please, sir? Thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we pray in Jesus' holy name.